Howdy guys, welcome back to B.I.G. Photography. This is Ben and this is part three of our uh, beauty retouch fine art style portrait. Uh, in the last videos, we did some cleanup, dodge and burn to correct the skin. Uh, we corrected some skin color inconsistencies and we also did some uh, contouring using dodge and burn. And in this video, we are going to be fixing up the hair, basically getting rid of some of these flyaways and stuff. And then uh, we also are going to be uh, replacing the background, basically just changing the color a little bit. And then uh, we're going to be doing some kind of interesting and unique uh, liquefaction. So please stick around for that. And uh, let's just go ahead and get started. All right, guys, welcome back. So let's jump right in, shall we? We're going to start doing the hair. So this is actually going to be pretty easy, mainly because our background is already a nice solid gray, is uh, we're just going to be getting rid of these flyaways and probably drawing in a few of our own hair strands to kind of get a nice clean hair edge. So let's go ahead and just do that. Uh, I'm going to make a brand new layer. I'm just going to call this one flyaways. And I'm going to show you two different techniques uh, that I use when I'm doing flyaways. And I'll probably speed up some parts so we can just get through it. You don't have to watch me do the whole thing. But uh, as you know, I love my in-painting brush here at 100% all the way across the board as set to current layer and below. And for things like this, this is just pretty simple, right? You're just basically going to come in here and, you know, little by little, remove each individual hair. I keep it at 100% hardness just because I want to retain as much of that uh, skin texture. Uh, as I can. Sometimes if you have a 0% hardness, um, it might kind of like blur the skin a little bit. But and you can see I kind of made a mistake here. Just go over that again. Yeah, if you make a mistake, just go over it uh, again. And something like that. Now when we get to the edge here, uh, it might be kind of difficult because sometimes, you know, I think this will probably be okay right here. But sometimes some of these bigger ones because there's so much of it, you know, it might kind of get a little funky or a little weird looking at the edges. And in that case, I'll just go ahead and switch to a clone stamping tool. And here again, we'll do 5% flow. Actually, let's go a bit low. Let's just try like 3% and uh, just sample from somewhere around here. And there now I have a little bit. Oops, let's go to, yeah, that's right. Let's, uh, now I have a bit more uh, control over that to make that nice uh, looking edge. So something like that. So um, same thing over here. Here it's a little messier. Uh, this is going to be pretty simple. Again, lots of clean lines that are basically spaced apart. Uh, so it's really easy to come down here and individually uh, delete these little strands. Now, of course, it does take time. Uh, maybe around this area, we might have to be a bit more creative with our clone stamping. Let's jump this up to 5%, 6%, and maybe have to kind of do our best to kind of get it looking smooth here, um, just because it's kind of in a dark area. Um, and I like the uh, low flow because I can kind of control just the amount of uh, basically clone stamping I want. And then with this, I can also pinpoint exactly what area uh, I want to sample from to do something like that. And yeah, that looks pretty decent. Let me see if there's any other problem spots. And if there isn't, then I will just go ahead and do this on my own and kind of speed up the process. Now I'm going to save uh, this part for a little bit later because I'm going to handle this part in a completely different way. But for now, I think just using my clone brush stamp and my in-painting brush tool, uh, I should be able to get rid of all this pretty easily. I'm going to keep this strand right here because I kind of like the way it's draped over the shoulder. But all these other little hairs here uh, we are going to get rid of. So let me go ahead and just uh, get rid of that. We're just doing the shoulders now, and then uh, I will see you back in a second. All right, welcome back. So as you can see, I just kind of uh, came in here and we just got rid of some of this stuff. Now, certain things you might notice, for example, here, after we've kind of uh, removed the hair, 
there's still a little bit of, I don't know if maybe it's, well, it's not a shadow, because well, it could be a little bit of a shadow, or just some parts that we didn't dodge and burn. And sometimes when you are clone stamping, you might uh, be stamping from an area that's lighter or darker. And, you know, it's a really easy way to fix that, right? We're just basically going to, uh, you can create, for example, here, this is darker on the shoulder. Let's just go ahead and create a new curves adjustment let's brighten that up a little bit and just dodge it down we're going to invert it we're going to paint with a white paintbrush with a low flow and hardness and then i can come over here and oops let's turn my stabilizer off and i can come over here and we can just lighten up some of these little patches that were kind of the parts that were under the hair strands that we were uh, removing so yeah, just like that. Uh, I'm not gonna do the whole thing because you get the idea. But this is actually really quite useful, especially in areas, say something like over here, where you know you might be sampling from an area here to put the texture here and it's way too dark or way too light. Just come in later with dodge and burn and uh, dodge it back down or burn it back down and um, it'll look good. I think we're okay here. Maybe here, there's a little bit of a dark spot from my uh, clone stamping, which wasn't that fantastic. But I can come in with my little dodge and burn, or in this case, just dodge and just like that, just kind of fix that little dark edge. Perfect. All right, cool. Okay, that is done. So now we're going to move into uh, this other part, these other flyaways here. Now, um, let's start over here because this is going to be a little more difficult. As you can see, there are a few, if I go back to my flyaway la layer, there are a few strands that I can get. Uh, rid of using an in painting brush tool just coming in here some of these especially these ones that stick out like that pretty easy uh, maybe like that one down here and even these down here by the shoulder um, pretty easy to get rid of if I want to get rid of some of these little like hairs that are coming up especially when you have a backlit or a kicker I just come in with a clone uh, clone stamp tool and just sample pretty much right next to it and you can just kind of get rid of those little those little baby hairs that can stand out because of the reflection. So now we have all these other hairs and they're way too clumped together. I mean, you could, I'm sure you could, uh, if you want to take the time to come in here and just manually, carefully, individually delete uh, each one of these strands. And it'll probably work and it'll probably look okay. But uh, I think it's just, there's too many and especially as we start getting into here, it's a bit too clumpy. It's too clumped together and it's going to be too hard to you know, isolate each of those individual strands. So what we're going to do is using a clone stamp tool. And this only really works because this back area of the background is pretty much a solid gray. It's almost all the exact same uh, value. So if we sample from, say, around here with a bigger brush, and let's actually just go 100 low and let's do hmm no actually you know what's lower our flow down a bit say five percent so if we sample from here and just start painting then we can just basically paint that out really simple and as you can see uh, because the background color is the same it's really easy to do so when I do this I actually like to go a little bit over because you know we can always mask it back in but I want to kind of go over because what we want to do is we want to create our own uh, hair edge and that new hair edge we'll have more control over in the end okay and maybe I might want to just step back a little bit do a little bit of a bigger brush I'm still at hundred percent hardness just because this is very similar we could also drop our hardness down Maybe to get a softer edge and just kind of blend in uh, that part there. That way it looks uh, okay. Now, there is one thing you might notice when you kind of zoom out sometimes and depending on the size of your image, you can kind of see there is this kind of right here. You can see, you know, the color is not matching up. It's really showing a lot of banding. And I think a lot of that issue is one is just kind of a, a weird like rendering issue when you zoom out at certain distances. Because if I zoom in here, then it all goes away and it looks really smooth. If I zoom out, you can start to see these kind of weird waves. Uh, you can eliminate that in two ways. One way, you can just come up to your document, convert format ICC profile, change it to 16-bit, and you'll notice that those things should go away because now there's more color information to make a smoother uh, gradation. But uh, for the most part, 
you don't have to worry about it. I guess what you do, you should be aware of it when you export to your final output to make sure that those kind of weird waves and stuff are not being seen because as we zoom in, uh, those waves kind of go away. But I think it's just, you know, especially you see it a lot when you have a soft edge brush where it's kind of creating a gradient and especially even though it's all gray, you know, if we zoom in, you know, there is, you know, noise in this image. It's not a completely solid gray color, but we're not going to worry about it too much because we are going to end up replacing the background with a different color and that might all kind of get lost, but you could always come in here and try to blend it in a little better. But for the most part, I think that looks okay. And we can do the same thing here, but we have to be a little more careful because we actually have kind of a slight gradation. So for example, if I were to sample from say here, let's zoom in a little bit and kind of clone stamp paint, uh, it looks okay, but I don't know if you can't see it on YouTube maybe, but it is a tad um, darker. You can see because even though, because this, as we get further away, it does become a bit darker. So in this case, I think I might actually just use the easy method where I'm gonna come in here and individually uh, in paint uh, these hairs out, especially on this side, just because the hairs are further spaced apart, so it's much easier to delete each individual strand. And then I might come in here and just paint that a bit. So as you can see here, we have this new clean edge. And uh, let me go ahead and just do this little part, and then I'll go ahead and clean up the rest. Uh, so let me show you. So what we're going to do now is we are now going to start creating some new uh, hair strands especially on this part. Now first, I want to correct our mask here. So let's go ahead and make a mask on this layer here. Select our mask, grab our paintbrush. Let's just go 100% and let's grab a black brush here. And first off, let's go ahead and paint some of this back in here because we did go a bit too far. So let's paint in and get a nice clean edge. So maybe let's come back and just kind of keep it around right here. I like that edge. And we can do this. And to be honest, like for a lot of stuff, this is gonna be enough. You don't even have to bother doing any more than this. Uh, you can see here, we went way too far. So we went, that's all right, we can paint that back in. And that looks okay. Maybe just get rid of that. Maybe paint in that part again. All right, so something like that. So we have a much cleaner edge now. And like I said, you could just say, okay, you could, you could stop right here. You could be done. You could say, okay, I'm done. But what we wanna do is just create a little bit more of a natural looking edge by drawing in our own hairs. So uh, let me see, let's go ahead and do a new layer above this, the very top, like a brand new layer. And let's call this one strands, okay? And all we're going to do is take a paintbrush we are gonna sample uh, from a color somewhere around here. And then we are gonna make our brush really small. Paint. And we're just gonna kinda of try to get something that's around, you know, this same uh, size of a strand of hair. And it's gonna vary from each image, but maybe around here, 1.9, that looks about the size of a strand of hair, right? Okay, cool, let's do that one. And let's do that. And so now we've got, we can start painting in like individual hairs. Now what we gotta do is there's a few ways we can do it. Now up here, where the hairs are just basically brown, it's gonna be pretty easy. I'm gonna come over here, pick a color. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can using you can do that in manually, or you can use the stabilizer where it's gonna make, you can actually paint slower and create like nicer strands. Now one thing you will see is that it's very, very sharp compared to the rest of the image. It's almost too sharp, right? So what I like to do is just apply a Gaussian blur effect over this whole layer. Come over here to, let's actually, let's draw a hair. Let's draw one little hair so we can kind of see like that. Okay, this is, we're not gonna keep the, well, let's just do a real one. Let's do something like that, okay? Uh, it's a bit too hard, it's too sharp. It doesn't look real. Of course, at this distance, you can't really tell. But when you zoom in a bit, you can kind of see that, okay, it looks kind of phony. So let's just go over to our effects tab. Now, if you don't have this one uh, in there, you can go over to your view studio and make sure effects is checked. Go to our effects tab and I'm gonna click on Gaussian blur 
And now this is going to apply a Gaussian blur to everything on this layer. So it's super, super convenient. And as you can see, just by adding one or two pixels or point two pixels of Gaussian blur, it really helps blend the image together. And because it's on this whole thing, now everything I paint uh, is going to have that blur automatically uh, on it. And so I might come over here, sample a new color, and maybe just come and paint another strand this way. And, you know, with hair, you know, it's a lot. It's not just one or two strands. There is actually quite a lot of hair going. And maybe I can make it a bit smaller, pick a different color. And here, I just want to kind of get a little bit more of a natural looking edge. Uh, picking the right colors is always going to be um, a challenge, but just sample from sample from anything nearby and I think it'll probably end up looking okay let's just do one more right around here and if you want to get creative you can always do little things like you know something like that you know maybe something like that just to kind of really sell the effect you know hair doesn't always lay exactly flat and you know at this range it looks pretty decent it looks pretty real and we can always fatten it up a little bit by doing a few more just around it to kind of make it a bit more convincing like that and maybe grab a really dark color and uh, because we are having this Gaussian blur effect it does seem a bit lighter it's not uh, as harsh if we turn that blur off you'll notice everything gets really harsh and the cool thing is is we can it's kind of like a live filter we can actually reduce it and lower it as much as we can but a lot of times I think 0.2 for this one's probably gonna be pretty good that's gonna look pretty real and, and you know at this distance I think it looks pretty legit now let's come down here because this part's really interesting and I have a really interesting trick to kind of simulate this kind of hair. So because we have a kicker light that's basically hitting the back of her hair, her hair has become very like specular. There's lots of little reflections, lots of little shiny, little sheen here and there. And so if we just, let's see, if we just grab like say one of these light colors and just start and do a strand, you know, it doesn't really look uh, real, right? It, it looks kind of fake just because it's all one color and that doesn't look right right so we want to try to create this or simulate this kind of specular little effect here so let me show you a little trick to do that so what you can do is uh, you can come up here to where it says more click on more and you're gonna get all these cool brush things you can do and we want to go to dynamics and at the very bottom, we have something called luminosity jitter. And we're going to raise this up, let's say for now 20 something percent, set to random. And what this is going to do is it's going to basically vary the luminosity of the color we've chosen just randomly. So what I'll show you what I mean. So now when I paint that same color, you can see how the luminosity is now different. If I go back and put the luminosity jitter down to zero and paint another strand, you can see it's just one color. And if I actually really bump the luminosity, let's say 50%, then it's really gonna have some really crazy variation in its luminosity. And you can see right off the bat, this one in the middle and this one on the right looks very similar to this kind of hairstyle. Like you can see just by painting those little strands like that, it really does a good job of simulating that kind of specular highlights and sheen that we're getting off the hair there. So let's go ahead and back up a little bit. So we were at 50 right now. Let's actually drop it a little. Let's just try something like 35, 34% there. And sticking with our same color and we still have our stabilizer on is I can now come down here and maybe paint a few extra strands and that looks a lot more convincing. Still coming through, everyone's gonna pick a darker color, pick a lighter color, something like that. And I like to think that this actually looks really, really similar to that kind of specular highlight looking uh, hair. And we can come in here, add maybe some dark, it's a bit too dark. Let's grab another color here and you just do like that if you want to get a little crazy you can have one of these come off a little bit and do something like that 
and we can come and continue that down here maybe even like have a few that just kind of stick out a bit and we can always come back in here let's lower this a bit more it's going to let's lower it down to maybe 14 percent so it's not so intense and maybe like if we wanted to come in down here which we don't really need to this actually is like this edge is fine is we could come and maybe just pick a solidly dark color turn that jitter off and just come and just do like one or two little extra strands like that all right so that is one little neat trick that you can use to kind of help simulate the little you know inconsistencies and variables that we see in hair and let's go ahead and look at all of this together do a few more maybe up here I will uh, pick a different color and as we get to the top when the kicker lights not really specifically hitting that part of her hair we can still put a little bit of this in uh, but we might want to lower the um, luminosity jitter a little bit just to kind of keep it looking real and let's do something like that what do we say let's just call that do one more like there all right and voila you can see there now we have a nice clean edge and even when you come up here to the front you know it still looks pretty legit I think you know a lot of times it's always hard because I know I painted these hairs in so to me they really stand out and uh, another trick if you want to kind of fatten them up a little bit just duplicate them I'm gonna hit command J duplicate and now they become a bit darker they become a lot more uh, fuller and that might help actually sell the effect when you duplicate that you can see it kind of adds a little bit of like thickness to it which can kind of help make the hair look convincing and one more little trick and I don't claim to know how this works and I learned this from another uh, retoucher is using this new duplicated hair layer I'm gonna go ahead and hit command and select that layer Oops, select the thumbnail and it's gonna select just what I painted so it's just selecting those um, those strands and what we're gonna do with that layer selected is we're gonna make a mask and now I'm going to deselect that by hitting Command and D. And by attaching that mask, it kind of does a really interesting effect where it kind of... So we had, at first we had thickened it up. We had thickened it up a bit. And then we kind of thin it out a little bit with a mask. It just kind of helps blend it into the background a little better. Um, as you can see there, I'm not going to pretend to understand why this really works, but it's something that you can do to kind of help blend in your stuff. And now we have this nice, really clean looking edge and it looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is uh, because this side is pretty simple, uh, I'm going to do this by myself. I'm going to do that and then we're going to move on to some really interesting lookification. So hold on for a second. Let me just go finish this hair and we'll uh, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, welcome back. So uh, I just really cleaned up that little bit there. So now we have a nice clean looking hair edge and that looks pretty cool. All right, so now we're going to do some uh, interesting uh, liquefaction here because this will be kind of fun, I think. So um, what I want to do first before we do any kind of liquefaction is we have to basically merge everything down and create a brand new layer with all this information on it. And we're going to do that by going up to document, no, layer, uh, merge visible. And it might take a second or two. And now we have this one new pixel layer on top that has all our information. The also cool thing about this, or the other cool thing about this, is uh, we can now turn off all the layers below it because uh, we don't see them anymore. And also it's going to help uh, the performance of Affinity because now it doesn't have to render uh, every single one of these layers. Now we just have our completely before and everything we've done since then. So now that we have this new pixel layer, we can come over here to liquefy. And liquefy, what do we want to do? Well, there's two parts that I want to fix. And there's one thing that I think is quite interesting uh, that we that is going to kind of be cool, I think. And actually, before I do that, let me go ahead and do one more thing. Uh, I am going to duplicate this layer. So now I have two of these. And you'll see why in a second. So we're going to work on the top layer here. 
and let's go back to our liquefaction and just using our normal like move push tool um, I want to push in the sides of the arm a little bit because her shirt is pulling her arm really tight it's causing the skin to kind of bulge out a bit here so I just want to like push this in a bit just kind of make it look a little uh, straight oops not too much a little straighter liquefaction is something I kind of do very uh, infrequently well no to be honest I actually do do it quite frequently but I'm doing it for things like this where I'm just fixing little parts that can look a little better I'm not using it to try to reshape uh, someone's body uh, you know make them look slimmer or accentuate certain body parts I'm just using it to kind of fix things so it looks a little more and even here I might actually pull the arm out just because I want this more straight line as opposed to the shirt where it's like pinching her skin in because uh, the shirt was really tight so I might actually kind of pull out a little bit pull in a little bit adjusting my brush size here and there and you know it's gonna pull a little bit but I think that looks okay here like so let me just pull this in a bit. Alrighty, so you can see there, we just kind of did that, made the arms look a little smaller, and now it just looks a little bit more pleasing, you know, so that she doesn't have the extra skin kind of hanging over the tight shirt. So the next thing I want to do, and this is something very, this is going to be more of a creative uh, liquefy and a subjective liquefy, is here, she's got these gorgeous, big, beautiful eyes. And I do like her expression, but I think her expression would look a little more interesting if she was giving us more of those kind of like I don't know, sultry kind of bedroom eyes or the eyes were a little more squinted and a little bit smaller. I think that might kind of change the mood of the photo. So what we're going to do actually is we are going to make the eyes a little smaller. So I'm going to come in, zoom in a little bit. And what I want to do is just kind of slightly bring up the bottom. Now this is going to be very careful because you are basically reshaping an eye and it doesn't take much just a little bit like that. I'm actually going to bring the top down a little bit and again we got to be careful. Now we do notice that when we do this the eyeball uh, or the iris uh, pupil <laughs> iris will um, both actually will kind of change shape but that's okay. Uh, we are going to fix that in the next step. But first, I just want to bring the eyes in just a little bit to see if we can kind of like give her more of like a mysterious like look. Let's see. So that was before and that was after. So we just kind of made the eyes a little smaller. And, you know, if you always if you feel like you went a bit too far, maybe I think I went too far on this one. We have our little reverse liquefaction and we can kind of paint, uh, just kind of fix it basically. Uh, I've never really found a good way. I guess you can undo a bit, but I never really found a good way to kind of slightly bring it back. It's just a lot easier for me just to start over and do it again. So let's just try that. Let's just push up, not from down there. Let's kind of push up in the middle. Just a little bit, like so. Bring that down. I'm trying to retain the original shape of the eye just a little smaller, especially down here. Like I think usually when people squint their eyes, you know, they kind of, um, the bottom lids kind of come up a bit. So let's see how that looks. Okay. Oh, that looks, I think it looks pretty good, right? A little bit, maybe. Yeah, it's, it's sometimes you gotta, sometimes you have to walk away or you gotta get a second opinion because a lot of times like, you know, you know that you've edited it so it already looks not correct where another person would have no idea. All right, so that looks good. And let's go ahead and apply that. And as you can see, we have basically made her arms and her eyes a little more like, you know, alluring, I guess you could say, a little more of alluring type eyes. But the eye, the irises and the, the pupils and stuff, the iris, the shape has gotten bent out of whack because we liquefied it and we squeezed it together. So that's why we have this other layer on top because what we're gonna do is this, is we're just going to erase the inside of the eye with an eraser and that eraser is just going to reveal the eye underneath and bring it back and that's going to retain the uh, natural shape of the uh, eyeball and the uh, iris do the same thing over here and it'll be quite interesting because when I show you the before and after you're actually gonna see like the effect looks a bit more convincing now 
because we are actually seeing the whole I make sure we have this reflection in there all right so now you can see just like that it's just like she it's like a little animated gif like she just closes her eyes a little bit and I kind of like that right I kind of like this little like a little bit more like mysterious sultry kind of expression so you can always do things with liquefaction you know sometimes I've seen people where you can kind of make the edges of the mouth a little more smile more or less of a smile put a little bit of a frown you know reshape the eyebrows you can do lots of really creative things that I don't think is considered like really you know changing her it's just basically like changing her expression a little bit and it still looks exactly like her she looks amazing still looks beautiful and cool that looks pretty awesome alrighty so last step super simple is we are now going to um, we are now going to da -da -dun, place the background so a really easy way to do this is to use affinity's a really impressive um, selection brush tool and on that still top layer we are just going to and if we wanted to because we're pretty much done actually so let's do this let's actually just merge everything again let's uh, da -da -da, merge visible and then we can just go ahead and delete those two bottom layers. And now we have before and after. All right, so with that layer selected, let's go ahead and just select all of her right here. Dun, 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 like so. And because it is kind of man magnetic, it would it should catch all the edges pretty well. Alrighty, and if we missed a spot, we can hit uh, hold down option to kind of click it back there. It looks pretty good. Let me come in here. We don't got to be too perfect because we are going to refine this. So let's go ahead and come now, hit refine. And you should get this kind of screen where everything red is not selected and everything that's in color is selected. And it's good to go ahead and check your edges to make sure that it didn't make a mistake. So for example, here we can see it didn't catch the nail. So with the uh, matte color the matte tab selected using our paintbrush no we don't want to do that we want to do foreground we're going to do foreground and this is going to be our selection we're going to basically paint in the uh, fingernail a little bit and affinity should be smart enough to kind of fill in the rest and it does do a pretty good job of filling that here here we can see that it kind of picked up some of the uh shirt so let's just go ahead and paint that again with the foreground color and that's going to basically tell affinity hey i want this part to be selected uh, we've got a little bit where it's bleeding here that's fine and the next part is the hair so you can see here it kind of like didn't do a great job so we, we're going to select the uh, matte brush and just paint over that edge and you're, you're basically telling affinity hey take a look at this again because i think you didn't do a good job take a look at this again let's see if we can get it fixed and most of the time it does a really good job you can see here that it's kind of selected all it, or sorry it didn't select all this hair here we can try to like run over this brush with it and see if it knows what to do uh, kind of if not we can go back to our foreground and say hey you know what I want this I want this part to be selected and it'll probably do a pretty decent job of selecting it here and then we go switch back to the max it looks like this part is actually gray underneath here so you do got to do a little bit back and forth playing around with it uh, this looked okay here Another way to check your mask is to what I like to do is look at it in the black and white mode because here you're going to see it how the actual mask is going to look and this is where you'll also see things like you know it's not going to be too much of a too big of a deal but you can see here that it picked up some skin on the arm and we can just take that foreground color and just say hey no I want this to be selected I want that to be selected this little black spot here uh, these little shadow things aren't going to be too big of a deal and it should do a pretty intelligent job of knowing okay I'll just kind of take another look at it sometimes it might miss spots in the middle and we can look over here this looks pretty good nice clean clean edge you know here the edge is a little dirty that's probably mainly from my um, from my hair thing so here we can actually go background and we can say okay hey what uh, take a look at this again I want this edge to be not selected and there you go see it kind of did a nice job of cleaning it up let's go back to our overlay and you can see there it did a good job of cleaning that up so back to here did a good job of basically separating these strands we can go to our mat and we can just say hey paint over that and get those strands filled in nice that looks pretty good here something similar now there are shortcut keys for this I think um, at least on the Mac if you hit con if you hold down the control 
and paint, it's going to do the uh, foreground color, so white, like so. And if you hold down Option, it will do the background. And so you can tell Affinity, hey, make that the background. Don't you know select that. And you can see it kind of made a little nicer gradation there. Separate those hands, those strands really good. And matte is just great when you want to say, hey, go over this part one more time. I think you missed a, I think you missed a bit. And it usually does a pretty good job, especially because we have such well-defined brush strokes with our new uh, hairline that we created. It definitely helps uh, Affinity to kind of recognize that. It can be sometimes hard when it's the natural brush strokes when they're all very uh, thin and faint. And maybe let's come in here and do our foreground and just say, hey, let's do something like that. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's zoom out a little bit. All right, that looks fine. And so what I like to do is let's go ahead and do, uh, we can do it as a mask and just basically make a mask for this image. Or just let's go ahead and do new layer with a mask, just so I can kind of show you another way. New layer with a mask, we're gonna hit apply. And it might take a second. And now we have this new layer with a mask. And if I show you just that new layer, it is basically cut out from the background. So pretty cool. And so now what we can do, we can select just below that, and then we can come over here and go layer, new, fill layer, or shift F, click on that, and it's gonna pop up behind her because she is uh, basically being separated by that mask. And we have our new fill layer. Now we can come over here and pick all kind of different colors and do whatever you want. And so one thing that I like to do, say, so notice because it's a fill layer, it's just a solid fill color and it doesn't look exactly very real. And especially around here, it looks kind of funky. So one way to fix that is first, let's pick a nice color. So two things you can do here. Uh, I want to pick a kind of a complementary type color. So what I like to do is grab the eyedropper tool. Let's pick her skin. Uh, let's go ahead and just tap that and it'll select the skin color. And now, because I know the skin color is over here, Let's just pick something on the complete opposite end, starting over here. And that way I know I have basically the complementary color of her skin. And then once I have that color, I can now kind of adjust like the opacity, uh, the saturation, maybe something kind of dark like that. And then just because I don't have to always pick the exact opposite, I still have some room to play. Basically anything around here is gonna be complementing her skin color. And I kinda of like this kind of sea-ish green type color. And maybe we can kinda of darken it up a bit. Now, we're not done because as I mentioned, it's still a solid color which looks fake because there's no texture, there's no you know noise, there's nothing in there. And it's kind of handled some of these parts a bit weird looking. So what we're going to do is we're gonna take our fill layer and we're gonna change it to soft light. And with soft light, and oops, I've got my, uh, let's turn this back on, let's turn that underlying layer on. With soft light, you notice that it's basically that gradation and that noise from the underlying layer is now visible. And you also see that it did kind of like do a better job of blending in uh, the hair. Now the soft light works really well because the background is already gray and it's a solid color. And so now that we have our soft light, now we can kind of pick the color that we really like. Maybe bring it up to a little more bluish type tone. This is going to be all subjective. You can do any color you want. And you can lower the opacity if you want a bit. But now, much better than having a normal solid color, by doing soft light, it looks really good. You can also use overlay. Uh, and also hard light, but I found that soft light does the best job of blending in, especially with the hair. And just like that, we have a nice, cool new background. And maybe I'm going to play with the color just a little bit. And then I think in the next video, we are going to go into actually color grading this bad boy to kind of go for that fine art kind of a look that is seems to be kind of popular-ish. We'll say something around there. I don't know. Whatever, I'm, I don't wanna play with it. <laughs> but anyways, that's one quick way to uh, replace a background. And if you wanted to, this is a bonus, is that a while back on Affinity, they had some sale and I had bought a bunch of, um, 
what did I buy? I bought a bunch of fine art textures. They had a cool pack. It had like 100 fine art textures, all these really great textures down here. And these are great. These are really perfect for doing uh, kind of these cool backgrounds. So for example, if I find one that I kind of like, let's just grab one. Uh, I don't know. Let's just grab something like this. Grab it, drag it underneath our mask, and let's just adjust it to size here. And again, I like putting the uh, soft light blend mode in and lower the opacity. And now we've added just a little bit of cool like noise texture to the background. So you can do this with any image. Uh, you can download plenty of like textures, uh, fine art textures, uh, canvas textures. Uh, this little pack I bought, and I don't even know if it's still available or how much it is now. Um, but I did buy that little texture pack. And so here's like a little canvas looking one that looks kind of cool. You know, I could put that back there, maybe bring it in. It's going to give us a nice natural vignette. Switch it to soft light and lower the opacity. And yeah, just that little bit gives a nice little bit of texture. So that's another thing you can do to kind of add some more like fine artness to your photo. But uh, I'm not going to include that because not everyone has these textures. But you can always do that. And uh, maybe I'll do a video on that one day. Anyways, uh, that's going to be all for this video, guys. Uh, thank you very much. Let's go ahead and turn this canvas off just for now. And you can see here is our before. Or sorry, after. Here's our before. And here is our after where we... Dulles great cleanup, fixed the hair, and gave her that her new give her a new expression. Kind of gave her this nice, like sultry, alluring look, which looks really fantastic. And I think that looks great. And so what we're gonna do in the next video is we're just gonna color grade this bad boy and uh, we'll be done. So uh, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you don't subscribe to me, please give a subscription. Uh, you can also follow my work on Instagram. I have the link down there in the description. So also the model as well. So uh, thanks, guys, for all your support. Uh, I hit 500 subscribers, I think, a week or two ago. So I'm really happy about that. Thanks to all you guys for watching my videos. And uh, I will see you in the next one. All right, guys. Take it easy. Thanks for watching.